What a blessing it was last Sunday. I mean, we had a blessing family day. We had good singing. We had a good sermon. And uh, I'm telling you, it was a blessing. Now y'all stuck with me again. But praise God. I mean, we're going to give God the glory for everything. Amen. I had a call yesterday from a mama that called me. And she was concerned about her son. She said, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm losing him. And I told her, I said, you've raised him in church. You've prayed over him. You pray over your children every day. I said, you planted the seed. And she said, but I feel like we're growing apart. I said, let me tell you the thing first. Is that's a lie from the devil. Because I can tell you as a witness. When I was a teenager, I didn't like my mom either. Because I felt like everything she did was against me. I would go out and I'd do things I shouldn't do. I'd come home drunk. I'd come home in a state of mind I shouldn't be in. And when I'd get to the house, it never failed that my mama was sitting up on the couch praying. She never gave up. She never threw in the towel and said, I, I don't know what else to do. So I shared with this young lady yesterday, I said, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope of what God's given you. You've taught, you've trained these children up in the way that they should go. And one day, they will serve the Lord. I'm a testimony to that. Because I had a mama that didn't give up. She knew that I wasn't doing right. She knew that I was a heathen when I was a teenager. But she still loved me unconditionally. She didn't give up. She didn't give up hope. Because you know where her hope was? It wasn't in her son. Her hope was in the son. The son of God. There was her hope. Her hope was in Christ Jesus, her Savior. Because she knew that the seed was planted by her. Just like Paul said. Paul planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Amen? Amen? So Mama knew that God would give that increase in due time. This is not what I had this morning, but it's, apparently it's what God's got. But he knew, and she knew in due time that God would give that increase. And I stand here today saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Many of you sitting out here is the same. Is the same. Many of you sitting out here is the answer to mama's prayers. Because we had a praying mama that didn't give up. And I'm not saying that daddy didn't pray too. Because I know they pray too. But right now we're focused on mothers. And the role that they have in our lives. And this morning I want to share with you about a mother that had one of the most important roles that any mother could have ever had. And that was Mary, the mother of Jesus. She had one of the most important roles that any mother on this earth could ever have. And I can't imagine some of the things that she's seen her child go through. Some of the turmoil and the, and, and, and the, and the, and the hate and the things that was treated towards her child. You know that there's times she was happy, there's times she was joyful, and there's times she was downright mad because the way people treated her child. Do you mothers like if somebody's ugly to your kid? No. Absolutely not. Your instinct is to protect that child. And here's a mom with a son that's not just any son, but he is the son of God. Imagine for a moment if that was your child. Imagine what she went through. There was a little boy that was attending his first wedding. And after the service, he asked his, he, he asked his, uh, his mother asked him, Son, do you know how many women a man is allowed to marry? He said, 16. The boy responded, his mother was shocked. What do you mean 16? It's easy, the little boy said. All you have to do is add up, like the pastor said, four better, four worse, four richer, and four poorer. We think that everything that we say, the kids don't take to heart. But they take more to heart than we think. 
And that's what I told this young lady yesterday. I said, you have trained these children in the admonition of the Lord. Just because they're getting to be closer to being grown, don't lose hope. Don't throw in the towel. Think about Mary when Jesus was getting close to the end of his life. She didn't throw in the towel. She didn't relinquish being a mom. She kept being a mother. And that's what God called her to. Luke 1, 34 through 38. says, Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Praise God. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be. That's what I want to focus on this morning. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord departed from her. Let it be, is what Mary said. Let it be according to your word. And I know many of your mothers have a hard time turning things over to God. It's not easy when you see your, your son or your daughter going down a wrong path. As parents, we want to, first and foremost, we want to make sure that our children are safe. But secondly, we want to make sure that they're doing right. We don't want to see them go down the wrong path. Why do we not want to see children go down the wrong path? Because we've been there. We've done it ourselves. We've seen where God brought us out of, where we were, where we are now. So here we have a mother that is with child that's never been with a man. Can you imagine how people talked about her? Can you imagine the things that people said to her husband? To Joseph, because at that time they wasn't married, he was betrothed. But God told Joseph, you go ahead and marry her. Can you imagine how he felt? What's people going to say? Here we are, engaged, and she's pregnant. Think about how this man felt. But when the Lord came to him in a dream, he knew exactly that I'm in God's will. This is God's will for his son to be born. And she was born, and this child was born of perfection. God don't do things halfway, folks. And if you think that your children are in a place that they don't need to be, then you need to be on your knees praying. I need to be on my knees praying for my son. Because if they're not where they need to be, then we ain't crying out enough. Because here we have a mother that she said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be. Let God's word be what God's word is. And she was faithful. Her faith didn't waver. She didn't, give, she, she didn't doubt that what God told her. She knew that she was going to be the mother of the Most High King. Folks, let me tell you something. This woman bared the Son of God. What did you bear? That's what I ask you this morning. What did you bear with your children? You bear children of God. Because if you're teaching them the Word of God, and you're teaching them how to change their life and to become a, a, a child of God, then you bear children of God. You didn't bear the Son of God, but you bear children of God. So don't lose hope. If your child is right now is living a life that he shouldn't be living, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Because there is hope in no other name but at the name of Jesus. That's where our hope is. And I know my mama didn't lose hope. She didn't give up. She prayed. Now she could hit me upside the head a time or two. Literally. Now I'm not saying that she did it, you know, metaphorically. She did it. But I deserved it. But there's never a time that my mother corrected me that I didn't need it. There's never a time that she didn't love me that I didn't need it. 
And that's what we have to understand. Is Mary, her faith didn't waver. She didn't give up. She was committed to God. She knew. She knew that if I submit to God, then God's will will be complete in my life. And she submitted to it. That's the first thing. Is a mother's call, mother called by God submits completely to God's will. And now I want to ask you a question. How many of you mothers have submitted to God's will? How many of you brought your children up in the admonition of the Lord? How many of you sat around reading the Bible and teaching the Word of God to your children? See, it starts at home, folks. It has to start at home. We have to share the Word of God. We have to understand that God's Word is what gets us through the course of a day. God's Word is what gets us through life. But we have to keep it in our home. It may not be in the school, but we got to st- it's got to start in your home first. And it's got to spread like cancer. God's Word's got to spread like cancer spreads. And it's got to go, you've got to start at home and you've got to instill this. Because how else is our children, when they get to school, how are they going to know what's right from wrong if they're not getting taught at home what God's biblical principles are? I'm here to share God's Word with you. I can't train your children. That's a job that parents have to do. But what we have to understand is we have to be completely submitted to the will of God. That's the first thing as a parent, a mother and a parent. Not This ain't just to moms. This is to all of us. The second thing is a mother is called by God. A mother called by God does not have to be perfect. Okay? How many of you mothers in here are perfect? How many of you men in here are perfect? Ain't nobody raising their hand. You know why? Because none of us are perfect. We know that. That's pretty, that, that's pretty cut and dry, isn't it? Ain't none of us perfect. I want to share a story with you about a man named Dr. Benjamin Carson. He's a neurosurgeon. I think most of you might know who he was. He ran for the presidency in, uh, in the primaries in 2016. But he was a neurosurgeon at John Hopkins. And he told this story about his mother. His mother come to him and his brother, and she said, I want you to do a book report. I want you to do a book report every couple of weeks. And this wasn't for school. This was for their mother. They had to do a book report for their mother every couple of weeks. And then the man got to junior high, and he discovered that his mom couldn't read. He said, here I was, all these years, here I was scratching stuff out. And, and correcting, making corrections and all of this because I wanted it to be right. And he said, my mom couldn't even read. But yet, she raised two very successful children. Even though she couldn't read. She wasn't perfect. She didn't know how to do everything. But she raised two children that were successful because she dealt, she did what she had to do to get through life and to teach her children. John 2, 1 through 5. It says, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to to do with me my hour has not yet come that's what I want to focus on my hour has not yet come his mother said to the servants whatever he says to you do it despite the fact that she was the mother of Jesus Mary wasn't perfect she asked Jesus to perform a miracle that the time hadn't come yet for and I believe he probably did it out of respect I believe out of respect for his earthly mother, Jesus went ahead and he did the miracle. He turned the water into wine. Was Mary wrong in asking him? She wasn't perfect. Only the one that was perfect was the one that was in her womb before he was born. And after he was born, he was still perfect. Ain't that something? Did you know that Jesus was God in the flesh on earth? Well, yeah, we all know that. Where, where are you going with this? I'm fixing to tell you. Jesus was God in the flesh. He was fully God, but yet, you know what else? He was fully man. 
So you know what he had the opportunity to do? He had the opportunity to sin. He sure did. He had the opportunity to sin. But did he ever sin in the entire course of his life? Absolutely not. He did not. You know who the perfect example for us to follow is? Jesus Christ. Amen? He had every opportunity. The devil came to him. He had every opportunity to sin. But he chose to be holy and not unrighteous. See, life is about choices. Mary made a choice here. She asked Jesus to do something before the time had come for him to do. Jesus did a lot of miracles. So why does this very first miracle have anything? What is the point of it? He did all kinds of miracles. So what are you getting at? What I'm getting at is he was a son also. Not just the son of God. He was a son to his mother. And he loved her enough that he performed this miracle. Even though his time had not yet come. Think of the awkwardness of the, of the situation. Mary's request in the conversation with Jesus appears to be out of line with what Jesus was ready to do. Though Jesus performed the miracle, there's a feeling that he did so because he loved his mother. Amen? So if that is not a clear indication that Mary's imperfection, I'm going to share another story with you. Matthew 12, 46 through 50. It says, while he was still talking to the multitudes, Jesus was preaching here. He was bringing a message. While he was still speaking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brother stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to to the one who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. If Mary had understood the task of Jesus, would she have tried to interrupt him during his sermon? Or even agree with his unbelieving brothers that his ministry needed to be tempered? Stopping the ministry of Jesus even for a little while. That was a mistake on her part, wasn't it? He was in the middle of a message. Have you made mistakes before as moms? Have you messed up? Certainly. So has the dads. And you're going to make more mistakes. Whether your children are little, whether your children are grown. You're going to make mistakes today. You're going to make mistakes tomorrow. But what we have to understand is we don't give up because we make mistakes. We keep pressing on. The last one I want to to mention is a mother called by God never relinquishes her title. A mom never relinquishes her title as mother. John 19 and 25, and this is the one that gets me the most. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, And Mary Magdalene. Now I want you to picture. This mom. Standing at the foot of the cross. While her baby. Her child. Is nailed to that cross. And he's hanging there. In misery and agony. Been beaten. Got a crown of thorns on top of his head. And he's, st- and he's on this cross dying. Can you imagine what she felt? Mary didn't stand passively by the foot of the cross. She crumbled at the foot of the cross. She fell down to the depths there, moaning and wailing and begging God to stop the misery that was happening here on this earth. She knew that she gave birth to the only begotten Son of God. But don't think for a minute that her mother instincts didn't kick in. Watching her child take his last breaths, standing there, or hanging there on a cross. 
and we think that we have problems. We think that our children are just out of control. We think that our children are a burden sometimes. How many of you parents have said, I love my kids, but I don't like them sometimes? I think everybody said that. I think we could all raise our hand. There's many times that we, lo- we always love them. But there's many times we don't like them. But a mother standing at the foot of the cross. The truth of Simeon's prophecy at the birth of Jesus was suddenly true. The cross cut deeply into Mary's heart. Despite the pain, however, Mary was there. She was a mother from the beginning and a mother at the end. A mother called by God never relinquishes her title. She was there when he was born. She was there when he was 12 years old and he was ministered and they were looking for him. And she was there at his death. There's moms in this world today that they've seen their children be born. They've seen their children grow up. And some of them seen them come to salvation. And some of them are going to be in, the, in heaven looking down before they see it. But I want to read these last few verses in John 19, starting in 26. It says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. Hanging on the cross, he looked at his mom and he said, Woman, behold thy son. I'm still your son. And I love you. But my time has come. As mom and dads today, I ask that you... Cherish the time that God's given you with your children. Don't take God's word and beat them over the head. Don't take God's word and tell them you're going to hell because you don't have Jesus. How about you show them who Jesus is? And show them that, you know what, without Jesus, there's a life that's not good. But with Jesus, there's a life that's amazing. See, if we'll quit trying to beat our children with the word and teach our children the word then they can make that decision for themselves they can make that decision for themselves that life eternally with Christ is better than life eternally without Christ see I did it wrong for many years I did it wrong for many years because I beat my child over the head with the Bible I beat him with scripture and I told him all the things that he was doing wrong Because I thought that that was what Christ wanted me to do. And one day, and I shared this in Bible study. One day I was praying and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he gave me one word or two. He said, love him. That's all the Holy Spirit told me, just love him. Not asking you to preach to him. Not asking you to beat him over the head with the word of God. I'm telling you to love him. You know why you love him? Because love covers a multitude of sin. That's what it says in Peter. Love covers a multitude of sin. So if we'll learn how to love our children with the teaching of the Holy Spirit and teach them God's Word, then we will see lives changed. Then we will see future preachers and future evangelists and future teachers growing up in the schools today. Just because they have to go to public school don't mean that they have to believe what they hear in the public school. Because it's what it starts in the home is where it starts. Is God in your home? Is God being taught in your home? That's what we have to ask ourselves. When I was a child, one thing that I can remember, not vividly, but remember every day, is my mother didn't miss a day in school. That we got up and we sat at the table with our Bibles open and we read God's Word. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't retaliate a lot of it. I didn't remember a lot of it. But I remembered sitting there with our Bibles open. And I remember that each one of us kids had to read a verse or several verses. And I never forgot that. When I was standing in a bar 
wondering am I, if I died right now, would I make it to heaven? And drunkenness and stupid, I knew that if I died at that very moment, I would miss the kingdom of God. I wouldn't make it to heaven. And I thought about that Bible being opened as a child. I thought about sitting there and reading God's word. And I thought about, do I really want to be here? Is this where I want to be? Is this how I want to end my life? Or do I want to end my life with Christ? I thought about it long enough that one day God, through the Holy Spirit, drawed me to the cross. And he drawed me to the cross and he drawed me to salvation. And he drawed me to eternal life. I ask you today, share your story. However you come to Christ, share it with your child. Share it with your children. Let them know that you're not perfect, that you've made mistakes. Because you know what? We have our children, some children look at their parents and think that, well, you never, you never was a kid. You never done anything. You never had any fun. You never done anything. Let them know the pain that you went through before you got to the joy that you now have. Because it's through that pain that they can see that joy. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the time that you've given us. We thank you so much today for moms and all that they do. The love of, the, the love of a mother is so precious and so special. Lord, I believe that uh, the reason a mom is so close to her children because she carries them for nine months in the womb. And she just has that bond. How many times do we see in a sports event and, and uh, uh, football or baseball or, or rodeo or whatever it is, how many times do we see these guys say, I want to say hello to my dad? No, it's always, hi, Mom. I love you. Moms are very special. And Jesus, I know that Mary was very special to you. Woman, behold, thy son. Lord, I thank you so much for laying down your life for a world that is so torn and lost and undone. And I ask you today, Lord, that you would give us strength and hope and help increase our faith that we may walk, even though the world is dark, that we may walk in the marvelous light of Christ. That we understand that the world's not full of bad, that there's still good in this world. There's still people that love Christ. We walk around thinking that the world is, is, is falling apart and that, it, it, that it's going to the pits of hell immediately. But God, you're still on the throne. And when we have that kind of thinking, we're, our faith is wavering because we're not trusting you. You know what you're doing, Father. You knew from the beginning of creation to the very hour that we're standing in right now. You knew exactly what's supposed to be and how it's supposed to be. Father, let us follow you, not you follow us. Let us follow thy will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we praise you for the day that you've given us. Bless the mothers that are here. Don't let them lose hope. Because I don't care if their kid's 15 or if he's 25 or if he's 50. Never lose hope. Because God is still a God of yea and amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Ridge, would you play that song, please? Sir? I've got a song that uh, I want to close out with. And after this song, we'll be dismissed.